Today is the last Saturday of uh, August and we're getting into September, which is Gynecological Cancer Awareness Month. So we're setting the stage for September with a special talk on taboo words. Florence's favorite things and is quickly picking up. I've seen Harriet say so many things like that. So I am possibly <laughs> going to smile my way through the discussion. But we'd also like to remind you for whoever is watching to get involved and help us raise awareness yeah. of cancer. Call the body parts by their names. There is no shame in calling things what they are. Let's demystify the privates. A vagina is a vagina. Please join the conversation. Yeah. So guys, while I was doing some reading ahead of today's discussion, I found it very teaching, very interesting. Um, I had a very teaching couple of hours. It's important to know your body, especially the areas that you are interested in keeping private. And I guess I now want to ask all three of you, are there words that you struggle to say now or ever? Have you ever struggled to say these words? Yes, I'll Florence, I, 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 Florence, just been. I want to start before my internet goes off because it was acting up. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to. I struggle to say the word vagina in Nyakole. I'm not going to say it even here because I've not yet evolved properly to to go there. I don't even know how how to say it. Can you say it uh, in Ruchika? And it's, it's, it's not uh, been a word on my list of words. I mean, I've never thought of, of learning what it is, so I have no idea. You don't know what vagina is in Luchiga? In Luchiga? <laughs> Joseph, um, are you sure? Same as I, I don't know the first words you I'm learn. Not even la no, <laughs> guys. I swear. You, uh, wait, before you guys jump at me. If these words are enough to say in English, people don't say them in English. You think your parents are teaching you those words in your actual languages it's not parents that teach you you just learn oh, okay the people yes. that are around you yeah it's not <laughs> but are there words you guys struggle to say and do you want to share what those words are i used to struggle to say the word vagina and all privates uh the male organ the penis um but i've since grown up and in my writing i use a lot of those words and all the euphemisms that people used to call them so I no longer consider them as um, hiding uh, the word. For instance, in a child, usually when a woman is, uh, when she feels that her husband is not giving her enough sex, she will say, my husband no longer digs my garden, right? So in that case, the vagina becomes a garden. Um, and so when I'm writing, I'll either call the vagina a vagina or use um, the metaphor of garden to explain the stigma around it or to just own it. So yeah, I used to struggle to say to say those words, but now I don't. Yeah. Uh, Florence, what do you say instead of dig dig the garden? <laughs> <laughs> down under, down south, down there. Oh my God. That's so horrible. Like I used to be afraid to say vagina, <gasps> penis. I still even struggle to say anus. Like, you know, like what the hell? Like I just had to just grow out of it. And like I've said before, I personally didn't even know what the difference was between a vagina and a vulva until my late 20s, guys. It is that sad. I didn't even know. I had a urethra where the urine was coming from, you know. You know, I was afraid if I get my period, how am I going to pee? Those are things I didn't know. I didn't know what the vulva was because I call the whole thing vagina, which is really sad. And it's what practically most people still do, even adults. People do not know their vaginas. People have never gotten a mirror and looked down there. <laughs> we are down there. Because it's almost stuck in my mind, you know, in, this, in their privates. But these are things we should know. It's a body part, something we need to take care of. So how do you take care of something you don't know, that you do not understand? I feel like we should start saying the names out loud. Florence, um, I, I read somewhere that half of the young women are unable to locate their vagina and 65% find it difficult to actually say the word. And I think this is worrying because if you cannot say it, chances are high you will most likely be ignorant about it and the things that concern it. So um, Harriet has told us what you know, people from her side, you know, what she has called it at some point. If you had to, for some reason, speak about your, your, your vagina or other private parts, a to a doctor or in a conversation with your friends, what would you most likely say? Or what word would you use to describe what you're talking about and why? What has been your code name? So for me, right now, I'm very comfortable with my body. When I go to the hospital, I'll tell the doctor whatever the problem is. Um, in the past month, I've been having 
pain in my lower tummy. And at first they thought it was appendicitis. They later uh, found that it's, um, it's a cyst that ruptured. So you're going to the hospital to see a guy and they're going to do all these tests on you. And when my doctor told me we are going to do a transvaginal scan, the first thing I went to check was on Google. I was like, okay, what is this? What are they going to do? So I go to the hospital and the doctor tells me, we are going to do this scan. Uh, and I ask her where. <laughs> and then she says, uh, I'm, I'm going to insert the speculum down there. And, and then I oh. tell her, you mean my vagina? <laughs> and then she was like, yeah. So, so it's not that it's us only who fear putting the word call the body parts by their, their names, even doctors grew up in societies that we grew up in. And so they will say down there, or if someone is going to the hospital, they will say, I have an itch, an itch where, or I have, I, I have a burning sensation when I pee, a burning sensation where, you know? So it's, it makes it difficult for, you know, the point you're trying to make across, across clear. So I'm just happy that I'm in a place where I can tease whoever I'm dealing with about my body parts and speak to them please. I know, Go ahead and make them uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, isn't this so liberating to grow up and be able to call a vagina a vagina? I, I still remember the first time I, I told my daughter um, that this is a vagina, not, not koyo. We used to call it, hey, my koyo, so she would be koyo, koyo. And I'm like, it was some sort of version from Nyankole that is not exactly it. So uh, recently, I think a couple of years ago, we called it a vagina. So as far as it just kept repeating it everywhere, like she's at the table and then she goes like, vagina, <laughs> and we all laugh. But now it's getting more comfortable. But I think it's very liberating to be able to actually go to the doctor and say, uh, my vagina itches, or my vulva, or around my labia, or whatever, itches. I, I've had entire conversations with um, with a doctor, and we don't mention any of those parts. I, I have my code for me is. Um, what are you saying? <laughs> I think I, uh, what are you yes, a conversation about if none of you is actually saying I, I think, anything. I, I, I start like, um, ah, what? So what's the problem? And I, I go like, uh, I think I have a yeast infection. I, I read that somewhere. A yeast infection is cool, and normally it's not in the mouth, so it's not bigger. <laughs> Oh, oh, I think um, oh, I think I have a UTI. I, those are my cords, and then we start from there. And then he asks, uh, "Is it itching? Are you itching?" And I say, "Yeah, there's a bit of itching and burning sensation, things like that." And we finish. No one has seen anyone's vagina. No one has mentioned a vagina. No vulva has been mentioned. And I think it's really sad. Very, very sad, guys. Very, very sad. Considering that this is one of Florence's favorite things to say, I'm very surprised that she's just sitting there and looking at us. I don't know if she's judging us or she's... Florence, what is happening? I'm listening to you guys. Like, the experience is great. The problem is this. Like, I guess the fact that they don't let us even talk about it, you end up even not wanting to visit a doctor or a guy. And you don't want to associate... So I can't even tell you that I've had an experience, except that I used to fear even going for a pap smear, which is something we talk about, you know, because... They're going to invade my private part. And I have to tell them that, oh, my private part has this. If I have a discharge, I have to figure it out on my own. I have to go on the internet, probably go, you know, Google is amazing. So I hope that who are scared and, you know, want to get out of this slowly, this shell, just go to the internet. There's a lot of information. Of course, they are trustworthy sites. And if you want, we can share them with you, gynecological sites, some amazing people. Trust me, guys, when I read that Vagina Bible, the one I don't know whether Anna's read or Josephine, you've read it. It was yeah. revealing, even for an adult person like me in my 30s, because that's when I bought it. So I read something that's like, wow, this doctor is onto something. And these are things I don't know. These are things we should know when we are growing up, when we are young, because we are, we are coming from a vagina. A vagina is pushing us out. For those women who don't you know, do the natural bath, you do see, but those who do the natural bath, you know, you come out of the vagina and then you're coming out with a vagina of your own. Why shouldn't you understand what a vagina is and be able to talk about it and demystify it? And maybe, who knows, maybe even people who are raping us will stop because then, you know, this is something, you know, it's not so mysterious, it's not so hidden. And then again, there are some cultures who walk around naked. So I don't understand this period thing of private parts, private parts. When our cultures, most cultures actually, 
we grew up just burying everything and people just walk around minding their business, you know? But this hiding it, I feel like it's even increasing this sexual, sexual, stupid sexual perversions amongst people. But yeah, that's what I fear, it pops me as. <laughs> I remember there's a time I went to a doctor, but because it's, it's difficult, you know, growing up to say, to say these things, it's very, very difficult. So you're going to a doctor like Anne and like, you know, and I'm trying to explain what the matter is. But because I couldn't really say, and the doctor didn't want to also check, and I, was, I just kept saying, just check, and then you see what I'm trying to explain. But I'm not saying where it is. She also didn't want to check because she just didn't want to check. So check she where? ended up deciding, <laughs> so she ended up deciding that I think, I think you have this. And she gave me medication that, guys, I was on that medication. And I next went back to another. So now I go to the family doctor. So I refused to go to the family doctor because he's a man. Yeah. And you don't but want I, him embedding your so when I eventually got to him, he said, I want to see. He checked it and he told me, Do you know what was happening? To get a mirror and actually try to look so that even if you if he was so angry with me, he pulled out his book, he always has a textbook, opened the book and showed me and said, This is what's happening down there. This is how we guys it freaked me out so much that I eventually began to listen to Florence when she kept saying vagina, 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 and I said I, I must say it until it becomes Thank such you. a normal thing that if I go, I can actually say, Look, you need to check here. And that brings me to my next question. Do you think um, that not calling it what it is is you know gives it some kind of stigma? So people are afraid to know about it, to take care of it and give it attention. I suspect that you you ignore what you usually ignore the thing that you don't understand or what you've not been socialized to speak about. Do you think it would impact your going for a cervical cancer screening and so on? Florence, you've already said you couldn't go for a pap smear. Has that has not being able to say it or acknowledge it impacted any of you? actually taking the necessary steps to prevent yourself from getting these cancers? You know, I certainly, think, uh, you know, like that book that I've told you, what this lady, the doctor says, she's like, when you can't say the word vagina or even vulva, there is an implication that there's something dirty or shameful about that, you know? So she even puts out the medical term pudenda, which describes the, out, you know, the outside of the vulva. It comes from pudet, which means it shims, you know? <laughs> so you see where it all comes from. Historically, people just woke up in a patriarchal society and said, uh, pudet, do you dare? I don't know how they say, it shims. Why should it shim? So using such levels, according to this doctor, not, it's not only harmful to women on an emotional level, but it can have an impact medically as well. You know, so it's not right. And it can limit you from seeking treatment, like I've already said, it sh this shouldn't be happening. But it is, it is for many women, especially you find that the educated and uneducated. I know the power of education is the fact that, you know, as a woman, you can go and seek out doctors and express yourself. But even educated women, we are not doing that because we are afraid of this word. We are afraid of discussing this private down under down thousand lady beats part to the doctors. So it's <laughs> yeah. No, I, I can imagine uh, Flor, uh, just been experience. I had one, I think I was at NTV, and, and then uh, there was a little something that was, I think, on my vulva or something, a very small thing. But I wanted, uh, I wanted to treat, to treat it because, yeah, you need to treat the things. So I went to the doctor and I described the small something, and then the doctor said, let me see. I was like, no, it's so small. It's very small. Uh, it's just a small thing, but it's there. It's like, no, I want to see. I was scandalized, but up to now, I still appreciate <laughs> I appreciate that doctor because she's the only one who ever took a swab or checked and actually, like, it's a normal body part. It's just like your nose or ear or eye. There's I nothing know. shameful about it. Yeah, no, nothing. Totally. I, I'm so happy that now we can actually talk about these things. But before, oh my god, it just reminds me. You asked about um, things that we don't say, it reminds me of a, a condom that Florence. I told you my experience when I bought a condom, like uh, go to the pharmacy and say, Um, do you have condoms? How much is it? Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Just feel like it's terrible because it's uh, touching my sexuality. Yeah, I'm going to know that I am going to have sex, or if I, I don't know why we think it's a shameful thing, but I think. Not talking about it enough brings me things. Uh, it makes it makes it terrible, sad. Um, I could go on. I could go on about like in my groups. One time, one of my girl groups they shared I think a picture of uh, a vagina. I don't remember. 
it was a vagina. And then uh, someone is like, oh, disgusting. I'm like, why? It's a vagina. It's a very important body part. It's beautiful. And someone is like, no, Anna, there's nothing beautiful about the vagina. I'm like, have you I seen your vagina? It's beautiful. And I'm like, stop, stop, don't keep saying that. I'm like, it's beautiful. Get a mirror and look at, at yourself enough times you will come to appreciate and, and even take care of yourself properly. So, yeah, girls, get those mirrors and uh, I know... Get those mirrors uh, tonight! <laughs> <laughs> Harriet, you've been very quiet, and I, I would like to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've just been thinking about where all this is coming from. Um, and for me, it's, of course, rooted in our upbringing, in how women are viewed, uh, for the most part, as sexual objects. As a child growing up, uh, as a girl child growing up, uh, one of the phrases that I heard the most was, sit properly like a woman they always add the, the, the woman part, sit properly like a woman. And it had nothing to do with the sitting posture. It had everything to do with uh, your legs together. Is the vagina safe away from reach and touch and, 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 and sight? You know? and, and then you have a male child of the same age moving in the compound with his penis dangling and everybody's okay with that. So the girl child, you know, the first thing in your mind is, okay, the thing that I carry is, is ugly or it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a bad you. thing. It's, yes, it's not supposed to be seen. Uh, so responses like, you know, uh, the reactions we had when there are more women stripped all reflect, you know, how um, the vagina has been stigmatized. It, I think it's the most stigmatized body part, you know. Um, and, and I think that it's, it's, it's complex because that's where life comes from, like Florence said earlier. Um, so why do we attach shame to it? Um, so growing up, one of the things that would, would start a fight was when someone called, uh, called you, called, when, when someone said your mother's vagina. Of course, when it's said in a choli, the vagina in a choli sounds different. I, I, I won't say it sounds ugly. <laughs> it sounds different. <laughs> so when someone, when someone says the phrase, your mother's vagina, that will start like a world war. You know, people will fight, the mothers will fight because it's considered something sacred, but it's also considered something deeply shaming, you know, something to be ashamed of. And so if someone um, invokes your vagina, it means they have insulted you. So... Of course, as a child growing up, you, you carry that shame, you know, you don't want someone to touch you because if they do that, they will take away your, your honor. If you expose your vagina, it means you're, you're careless, you're, you're not upright. So yeah, all that makes it difficult. And so you go to the hospital and you say, my nini is itching or my thingy, you know, <laughs> if you ever get to say that. so. <laughs> Why is, it, why is it such a dirty word? And, you know, Harriet has explained quite a bit. So why is it a shameful thing for people? Why is it that we just accepted the stigma that was around it and, you know, all of us took it in stride at the point where we did, that we never sat down and questioned and said, but why is this the one part that people, you know, because now it's easier for people to do breast cancer. Everybody says, check for breast cancer, do this, do this. Everything else everyone is quiet about. Okay, not everybody, but people are less likely to actually push for that. I didn't know much about the gynecological cancers. You know, as far as we know, it's uh, cervical cancer, but there's quite a number of them. We are not in tune, or we are not interested in, in getting to know more about this. Why is there so much shame around it? Yeah, and you know when you talk even about shame, now even translating them even in our local languages, you say it and someone says, obscene, you know, like that's obscene. How can you say a man? That's obscene. You know, like it's the body part. Oh, Gamba, oh, Muguru, like that's in Lugada, even in Soga, they call it like that. But you know, you say that, oh, dirty, obscene, how can you? But you know, like I find it easier, that's why even I find it harder to sell them even in Lugada, or because someone is like, obscene, 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 why should it be obscene? Why isn't, oh, a face in Uganda, obscene, why isn't, oh, a nindo, that's nose in Uganda. You know, obscene or oh, mumua obscene. A bell, even the, the bell can pass, they make it pass, although some people still are like, 
and then you come to the emana. And, and everyone is uh, going to cast obscene, it. obscene, dirty, dirty. You know, they make it dirty. They make it, you know, you shy away from meat. I don't even know if any other substitute to Luganda words. So I just stick to vagina. Well, because English made things anyway simpler for us. But yeah, it's that shame that you don't even know about cancers like vaginal cancer, vulva cancer, or, you know, those cancers. Or even that like, it's for pleasure. Or this is an organ. And it's, you're, you're it comes to the test I'm going to give you guys later. Hmm? Sorry? I was telling you, Florence, that you are jumping into the test I'm going to give you on the subject of cancers later. Oh. Um, just to look at some of the, the things people have raised online. Uh, Damali says, we've been raised to think it's not honorable to have a vagina since clearly men will openly urinate in public, but should a woman try it? <laughs> Lakisa Masi says, yes. No, somebody says, ah, Patrick Onem says, ah, mirrors, holds his head, times three. <laughs> and I think Lakisa Masi responds to him and says, yes, dear, like men do. It's beautiful yeah. and told so. Anna says, Anna Kukundako says, that is how reproductive health challenges for women and men start. It's okay to say vagina, it's just an English word. Yeah. yeah. Yo, so, Josephine, I was just thinking of your question, why we don't call it that. And for me, I think it's this whole, you know, idea of looking at women as sexual beings. Um, if you, if, even now, if a man who is mentally ill is walking on the streets naked. Nobody will run to cover him up. No. But when a woman strips, you know, in public, the first thing people will do is look for lessons and cover her up, you know? And so it's, it's like women's bodies are very complex, right? Uh, we revere it, we adore it, we fear it, we shame it, it carries all sorts of things. And it's not just one body part, it's all body parts. And so there are all these unwritten expectations of how a woman is supposed to carry herself. Uh, why do we say, why do we attribute virginity to purity, for instance, you know, uh, and, only for, and only for women? It's because of how society expects women to adhere to a certain standard of morality, you know, uh, which is not expected of other genders. So it's precisely that. And unless we start uh, normalizing the woman's body and, you know, telling our girls and boys that this is a body part, uh, this is part of my body, let's call this, let's give them their due names and let's give them the same normalcy, the same respect that we give to body parts of men, then it will continue to be the same, the same fear and shame. And I think Florence pointed earlier about um, on why sexual violence continues because women have been told protecting your vagina from the public is your responsibility. And so if a woman gets violated, the first thing people will say is, how was she seated? How was she dressed? You know, because they've given you this task of protecting your body and also accounting for why you were violated. So unless we undo all those um, moral yardsticks that have been placed for women. We'll continue seeing these things because it's one thing to call a vagina a vagina, but have we uh, done away with the stigma, with the cultural stereotypes that we've been uh, taught from when we were young? Yeah. Um, Harriet, you, you raised some really good issues. Um, someone just sent me a text and said, Josephine, tell Harriet that when we run to cover up a woman in the street, it's because we are trying to protect the women. Uh, I don't know why they're not trying to protect men, but okay, thank you for, I don't know. Um, we have some other comments. Damali Catherine says, how do we change the conversation that the next generation will be free to respectfully have these conversations? I think that's a really good question. Archie Wisdom says, very interesting discussions, but I think it's time to get the men on the set as well for more perspectives. Uh, BK Josephine says, I don't even remember my mother talking to us, her daughters, about the southern part. For that, I'm not comfortable calling it as it is, um, unless we are in a biology class. And then Patrick Onen again says, is it shaming or is it worshipping? I think the female body is sacred for so many reasons, and that would be the reason it was created the way it was created. Over to you, ladies. Worshipping? Do you know they are cutting it up in some parts because they don't understand what it is? Cutting young girls' labia off, cutting young girls' clits off, you know? Worshipping, you call that worshipping, it's not worshipping. They're just making us feel dirty and feel like 
Ooh. You know, they can use it whenever they want. I think men worship vaginas at their convenience. Exactly. Um, which is always, you know, in, in the dark. You can't say we worship vaginas and the next thing you're, you're using a vagina as an insult to a woman. That is, that is just double standard. So, of course, it's, it, of course, it's a place of, of many things. But to say there's no shame and, just, and that it's, it's, it's a place of worship, no. I, I really want us to get into this question from, from Damali. And she says, how do we change the conversation um, for the women in the future to really have these conversations respectfully? How do we do that? What do you guys think? Well, I having, this, that, sorry, I'll carry it, go. Sorry. No, I was going to say having this conversation and similar conversations like this is, is one step forward. Uh, I remember when Florence posted this yesterday, most of the questions were like, you guys are starting the vagina monologues again, you know, something like that. <laughs> like people are scandalized. So I think the more we talk about it, the more normal it will appear in people's ears. Yeah, yeah. we should. And here, I, 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 here, I'm no longer in London. <laughs> but there is, we have like, a, they opened up a vagina museum, which is amazing. And people go to see and understand what it is. So these open discussions, open art, just putting it out there on display. And people getting used to it. We want to normalize it. Obviously, schools should be, bet should be doing better as well. Parents, well, some of them may be, you know, tied down to culture and stuff like that. Like, it's historic. Sometimes it's hard to fight cultures. But guys, culture is supposed to be dynamic. And that's the problem we have globally. We just stick to mm, our ancestors. Screw the ancestors. They're dead. They're gone. Create your own culture. Why do you... <laughs> A patriarchal bullshit culture, which is just messing up, you know, girls' lives especially, honestly. So the conversation needs to change in schools, in parliaments, because sometimes you even need policymakers to come and intervene, like seriously. It shouldn't get to that. But if it means getting to that, let it. Yeah, talk, talk. Guys, you know, one of, the hardest, one of the hardest things about my job here and having to moderate these things is that I have to read out some comments that I don't particularly want us to even acknowledge. But let me go on and do that. First of all, Lakisa Masi, please send your comment again. I can't see it. But Patrick O'Neill says, the cutting was for traditional reasons. When you speak to elders, they give you valid reasons for that time. I, <clears throat> yeah, that's what Patrick says. That's the thing. Actually, talking of cutting, sorry. I had a, a, a story from a guy uh, in Karamoja and he was telling me, oh, well, you know, women, men used to be, you know, circumcised. But then when the war came, they couldn't go and fight. So we had to transfer it to the women who stay home. But do you know how hardworking women are in, in those areas? So they had to transfer the culture to the women. They started cutting the women now because the men had to go and fight and they couldn't go fight with wounds. So there are all sorts of stories, but it's all sad. It's all traditional. Josephine, I don't... It's all about control. I want to agree with uh, uh, trying to control a woman's body. And, and, and that control is geared at making a woman uh, like someone who has, who has no say in, in anything that affects their life, including their bodies, including uh, a vagina, which is a tool of, uh, of, uh, of a lot of pleasure, a lot of, uh, you know, confidence. So if they attack that at a very early age as a whole society and make you feel like it's shameful to have even a vagina, yeah? So they are already limiting your possibilities. They are trying to control you. And this leads to a lot of catastrophic consequences. For example, uh, a lot of women will, will, will self-medicate rather than go to a doctor and explain themselves about what, whatever issues that are affecting their vagina or vulva or any area or something that comes, maybe an illness, an STD, because they are afraid of being called maybe loose, Oh, oh, I don't know what. Yet this, this is not the same for the, the males. The males are very proud of their manhood, of their penises, they, all these penis enlargement things, all these uh, trousers that try to show off their bulge and things like that. Yeah? We say the things, but when you are a woman and you're talking about vagina, I, I low-key admire bad black because, well, for her, the words flow out you know, crisply, they, they are smooth and everything, and she's not ashamed of her <laughs> vagina. She's a woman who is who owns her sexuality, uh, so I, I, I admire that part of her. Uh, so I, I, 
all of us need to start knowing that nothing about us is shameful. No, there's no need to be miserable about body parts. Why should a body part make you feel uncomfortable? Why? When it's healthy, when it's it's giving you life, it's it's allowing you to pee, it's, it's doing right. all these nice, important yeah, functions. Yeah? Someone, someone just sent me a message. They hear the woman Someone just sent me a message and said, are you on this Facebook live thingy? I need to speak to your pastor ASAP. So guys, they're going to be praying for me. But more importantly, there's a comment from, from yeah. Mercy that he says, the fact that we bleed, we are hematized. Even the women in the Bible were deemed unclear, unclean. The vagina has gone through discrimination, abominations, mutilation, etc. So this has to go away. No, this goes way back before we existed. That said, guys, when was the last time any of you did a pap smear? Or oh. um, well, I had a pap smear because I've had to, like, since I moved, not here, <laughs> to the UK, because I was afraid of even doing it in Uganda for those reasons. But then I finally got here and I was like, what the hell? I got the later and I tested towards the end of early, early, no, end of 2015 and early 2016. So I got my test. And then three years later, they sent me an email that a male post in my through my post who were post here so the thing and i went again for my other test so i have to wait for another like two and a half years to get another one but yeah i'm on top of that game of getting checked yeah okay. me too Hi. me too um i've been checked since um the first year when i came it's part of the general checkups that they do at school um but also because i've had like an issue uh, because I had an issue with my with pain after my period, I had that uh, transvaginal scan a week ago, uh, and and so yeah, I'm glad that everything is is, is okay. So amazing. Yeah. And now I've had um, a couple of uh, uh, checks, not enough, of course. I don't go enough, just like other medical checkup things. But it's mostly because of the. For me, it's mostly because not setting proper timetable and then. Sometimes health insurance issues come in, but I've had I've done what they call visual inspection. You know how they basically screening for cervical cancer, not a pap smear, but uh, they they look. They, I don't know what they use. Then they insert a very cold thingy in your vagina. Thank and, you. uh, I think they you know something. Yeah, you spread your legs like really wide open, and then someone gets a very good view of your inside. I think they can even look into your mouth. I don't know. <laughs> and that's a, a really scary picture that you're painting but you know I, i'll tell you one of the reasons i think either. it's extremely extremely uncomfortable for a lot of, of women um because already you're shy you're uncomfortable to be in that position so if you're already in that state you it's very hard for someone to tell you calm down calm down you know and and breathe in we it's going to not going to be painless it's you're dealing with the discomfort, you're dealing with the shame, you, you're dealing with so many other things before they actually insert that spectrum. So a lot of women actually avoid doing these tests. Um, I'll just read one more comment from, from Patrick Onen. Um, he says, for the Sabini women, they talk about lack of water in the areas they use to graze their animals. So they believe that when they cut the woman, she will remain dry and won't smell. Um, the other reason they give was a woman who is cut is less sexually active, avoiding promiscuity as their men tend to their cattle miles away but i will however, i don't even know why we should give that guy the, the attention i will however move on swiftly and give you guys a quick quiz on gynecological cancers i want quick responses yeah so we can quickly move on to closing the show which of the following is a gynecologic cancer cervical cancer ovarian cancer uterine cancer vaginal cancer or all the above hmm. all the above all the above but some of them appear after 60, but still we should know about them. And then yeah. obviously preventing, uh, well, talking about them, yes, vagina is really, really rare, but that's the thing. You have to understand your vagina and see, are there changes? Am I bleeding in between periods? Am I getting this particular discharge? Is this and this happening? Because there are signs and symptoms that help you. But if this is something you shy away from and deal with it alone, you might be that rare case that's yeah. getting vaginal case, cancer, and you might miss it. 
of course, you know, they talk about yeah. you know, how to avoid them. Some of them, like I say, they open they up and after menopause, but for some women, they can also happen before 50, before menopause. So there is that. And so they talk about, you know, leading a healthy lifestyle. Guys, healthy lifestyle is practically everywhere, <laughs> solving all sorts of situations so to prevent cancer. So, so during and after menopause, it's really not so different. So you use the same things. Always go for cervical breast cancer screenings. Yeah. Always, seriously. Exercise. Exercise is really important. And you know there are exercises, especially for the vagina guys, you know. Uh, those are things I just yeah. even learned growing up, you know, when I was already, like I said, in my late twenties. It's sad. These are things I should have known. Started from an early age. And this is where it comes in, like if there are some girls who are even active and then the hymen breaks because it can break during the exercise and then besides, oh, just lost their virginity. Let's not even talk about virginity. But anyway, exercise, eating a healthy diet, all of these things help. Don't smoke. If you can avoid secondhand smoke, please do. So maintain a healthy body weight. So it all comes down to that. But yeah, yep. these are serious. Um, I'm, um, I'm just going to share a few. I can't find the rest of my question. I must have misplaced them. But for some of the symptoms that people maybe should look out for, for cervical cancer, if you have ab abnormal vaginal bleeding or discharge, um, for ovarian cancer, if you have abnormal vaginal bleeding or discharge, you're feeling full too quickly or you have difficulty eating, pelvic pain or pressure, more frequent or urgent need to urinate and or constipation, bloating, uh, abdominal or back pain. That's all for ovarian cancer. Uterine cancer, look out for it if you have abnormal vaginal bleeding or discharge or pelvic pain or pressure. For vaginal cancer, feel abnormal vaginal bleeding or discharge or more frequent or urgent need to urinate and or constipation and vulva cancer you the itching burning pain or tenderness of the vulva and changes in vulva color or skin such as a rash sores or what please let's take care of our health not ignore the places that we're told to speak about because chances are high they could be breeding something that is definitely life-threatening and i mean at the beginning of this we should have mentioned uh chadwick who passed away at 43 yeah. and saw all of you tearing up and, and all of that Cancer is a big deal. And are you are you wiping your your, your tears? I'm so sad. I'm so sad no, that was he's passing. I can I really really. Uh, while the teenagers, yeah, like I dig this. I this guy. Like I liked him a lot. And that was a great shock. Uh, he's passing and to damn cancer. No words. Yeah. Well, I think if there's anything that teaches us guys, it is. Just get tested. Please check yourselves. Just take these things really, really, really serious. We might talk about the vagina, all of this, and it feels like they're just a bunch of women who are making noise about, you know, and I don't know what people like to term us as, but it's important that these things are hard. Um, Harriet, would you like to say some closing words and then Florence, you oh, can have a Yes, I think just to emphasize that, yeah, it's important to have these checks because a lot of the cancers actually get detected late when it's too late because we don't give attention, we don't pay attention when we should. But also I just feel like uh, there are so many excuses to why um, we continue to stigmatize vaginas. And I think that women should reach a place where they have ownership of their vaginas. Um, all the pulling that women do is for sexual <laughs> pleasure for men. The cutting that women do is for sexual pleasure for men. So it's time for women to have ownership and control what they want to do or not do with their vaginas and people should be okay with that and they should be okay hearing us say vagina because it is what it is and it's not an ugly word it's not uh, a criminal word it's not a shameful thing everybody came out of a vagina so let's normalize normalize it yeah and, and before you close, Florence, I just, uh, one of the things that Patrick mentioned that actually has just come back to me is when he said, um, so that they stop the smelling, uh, if the vagina is smelling. And I just want to say that comments like that also push women to um, doing things to, to themselves to stop a vagina smelling because some random guy has said, has said it, so people will doubt and, and, you know, use perfumes and things and that is extremely 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 dangerous so has a natural in, smell so yeah even yeah. in in people feeling like they are um, either making light of something or just talking out of hand 
please educate yourself uh, and know that some of the comments you make can very easily make someone start to take measures that could be disastrous for them. Especially please someone, spray who, vagina especially someone who has a penis and not a vagina. Yeah. Actually, you know what you don't know? The douche, mm-hmm. because this Dr. Gunter says that douches and all those stupid things that we put there, they are like cigarettes for your vagina. So that's how dangerous they are. So she said it's a, it's a vagina, not a pina colada. So leave it alone. <laughs> can take care of itself, you know. Even water can <laughs> disrupt the delicate ecosystem and increases the risks of, you know, infections. So yes, there are no more discharges. Of course, I don't know if we've talked about this. There are no more discharges, and that's when you know we should have the courage to go and see gynecologists or doctors, you know. So please leave women their vaginas alone. Oh yeah, about and if you want to see your doctor, please use the right words to explain where the discomfort is or what exactly. Is the yeah, problem. Exactly. The doctor might not understand down south and uh, mm. might think it is uh, something. <laughs> so, so. The doctor may be confused in it. Down <laughs> south and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hyatt, for, for joining us for this conversation. It's Thank been very interesting to have you um, sharing with us, Florence, as usual. And Anne. Bye bye. Yes. Yeah, it's been amazing. Bye. As usual, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and see you tomorrow. We're going to be discussing something else. Life and work balance or something like that, Anne. Yes. Take it away. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye.